turn to the news that Iran is threatening to disrupt Gulf oil supplies if U.S. sanctions prevent Tehran from selling oil in the global markets. And there Hashimi is director of the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Denver. He joins us now via Skype um, from Toronto in Canada. We appreciate your time. So this threat to disrupt, what does that actually mean? Well, I think it means to prevent other countries in the region from selling oil uh, through um, the Persian Gulf, particularly the, the Straits of Hormuz. And so Iran now is, I think, responding to the pain that it's feeling as a result of Donald Trump's um, tough line against the Islamic Republic, um, um, particularly attempts by the Trump administration to prevent the sale of Iranian oil. And so now Iran's leaders are saying, if we can't sell our oil, no one else in the region should be able to sell their oil. But what does that really look like? I mean, when, when they say disrupt, in, in what way? How? Well, we don't know, but um, for those people who are familiar with the history, during the Iran-Iraq war, there was a similar confrontation between the United States and Iran that re revolved around um, oil tankers traveling through um, the Persian Gulf. And Iran was able to, um, in a limited way, to try and uh, disrupt that particular flow of oil. That means using high-speed gunboats to intimidate tankers, possibly planting underwater mines um, that would prevent the navigation of um, international tankers carrying Iranian oil. So we don't know the exact details, but I think this is a threat mm -hmm. that Iran has issued in response to American threats to try and destabilize the Iranian economy. Okay, so um, the U.S. sanctions, how effective can they actually be if other countries don't join in? Well, not as effective um, um, as a comprehensive global sanctions regime, but as we're seeing right now, um, they can um, produce quite a bit of disruption in Iran's economy, and they have gotten the attention of Iran's leaders. So what we've seen right now as a result of unilateral American sanctions, the uh, drop in the value of the Iranian currency by roughly 50 percent over the last several weeks. Um, we're seeing um, um, major um, sort of economic protests taking place in Iran that are not directly related to American sanctions, but are indirectly connected to deteriorating economic conditions. So the United States has, you know, pursued this tougher hardline policy policy, and the Iranian leadership is starting to panic. And I think these threats that we're seeing to, you know, shut down the Straits of Hormuz or to restart Iran's nuclear program is really an attempt by Iran to push back against the pressure that it's feeling at this moment. So about that, about the nuclear program, um, Iran, obviously, they're not taking these threats lying down. They've also alluded to the fact that they may not continue to cooperate with the, the nuclear watchdog group. How, how likely is that? Well, we don't know. I think um, Iran now is trying to feel its way, you know, forward. It has, you know, officially stated, the supreme leader, that is, at the end of May, officially stated that Iran reserves the right to restart its enrichment program, which effectively means pulling out of the nuclear agreement, if it can't get the economic uh, guarantees from the other remaining members of the um, of the Joint Comprehensive Action Plan, the, the nuclear agreement. So, I mean, it's, it's dangled this threat in front of of uh, the Europeans, effectively saying that Europe has to um, provide Iran with those economic guarantees to keep its economy afloat. If it doesn't, then it will pull out of the nuclear agreement, restart its enrichment program, and then we will be back to a situation where we were roughly in 2012, 2013, when Iran was um, spinning centrifuges, um, making progress toward a nuclear weapon, and the international community was deeply concerned that if that, if that were to happen, it would be a game changer and something would, be, um, ha would have to be done to stop Iran from obtaining um, an atomic bomb. So I think the, this is a very dangerous game of brinkmanship. We don't know how far Iran will go, but it's certainly trying to play all the cards that it has to advance its own uh, international position. Okay. Um, Nadir Hashimi, thank you so much for your insight. We appreciate it. Thank you. The UN's envoy to Yemen is optimistic about